Hey guys, quick one for you on OMG against Bitcoin here. Omisigo. We were on the one hourly, the M60, and this is where we're at. We've had a previous HVF setup perform to target, get a little wind up, and then have another little stretch. Um, so it's been compliant, um, and its trend is established to the upside. However, this was a bigger pullback. We then struggled into another HVF, so made this low a little bit complex, but it did create a target. That target was met just with an H2 going into a rising wedge, little exhaustive pop out the top, and then channel down, down, down. Interesting thing about the channel down, 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 um, and there's a lot of lines in here. We do real technical analysis. We are not ashamed, uh, and we do patterns all the time, and we look at everything to get the wisdom that the market wants to give us. There's a bit of a left shoulder a head and a right shoulder and of course you go for the hvf style head and shoulders as you should which is the key round number that goes to those two lows which is the number 19 uh, which is just run and it's just run on the left shoulder and the right and your target down from up top here which is in around 22 takes you down to this level over here which was met as you initially supported. So I put a buy stop in the funnel here to get caught here in the 16s. It did rally up to that neckline again. Note that it hadn't made the target yet and then um, went all the way down. So you often get a return move out of a head and shoulders. And if you are really, really geeky HVF monster, um, you would have spotted, as is often the case, you got an inverted uh HVF in the right shoulder. Um, that'll mean very little to most people, um, but it means something to me and my private gang of merry HVF traders. So there you go. Um, that was your low of the shoulder, your high one, low two, high two, low three, high three. So you also got that as a little amplitude. In other words, the distance from high one to low one projected down and let's show you where it was projected from we may as well do all the details do all the drawings francis oh look at that almost a perfect pick of that bottom before you rallied all the way back fancy that another of those amazing coincidences that sometimes seems to always happen um, with hvf method anyway up to the neckline back down there we go wind up and we go and then we started making slightly high highs we touched that 19 level again showing it to be a key level of significance you see just run there just run there Winding up on an HVF here, there was your high three, there was your low three, midpoint, oh, the access was the 19, keep coming back to key levels of significance, got to do that uh, 18 steps to a lifestyle trader to really get some of the key points that come through with us. Anyway, down, down, down she went, down, down, down she went, um, in fact, let's just zoom in a little bit more so we get more detail, um, down, down, down she went, uh, and then we started basing out, so up to 19, back down, this time we stayed in the funnel, we didn't run the low of the funnel, that's that low three after the high three, that was that break that led to that target, um, little dip to the top, back into the axis, then up we went, ran the 19, but didn't go as far, grind line through that, could draw it if you want, it's getting me a busy chart, um, and then up you go and down you go. Now this was an ascending little setup. We take that as our H3, kind of like a primer. Look at that very stable little bit of funneling and a weak pop out break. You can see a little cluster of volume. Last time we were bigger than that was over here when you're topping out uh, for your target. You got a little bit of volume cluster here on that sell off, which was the inverted HVF target. And then you got a little bit more for your head and shoulders target. You see the targets and the patterns and the volume all coinciding. Um, there we go, there we go. Topping out here, up top there for our H3. Back down, really void volume low, super low volatility. A little bit of a drift up. And then the volume started to climb again here. Nice little pop through. That probably is your break with a gentle move. And then up to your first interim that's over there. Over we go. Now we pull back. This could in of itself be either an upside or an inverted setup. So there's a little bit of a squeeze going real quiet. You know, it's the evening now. Um, time now is one o'clock in the morning, British summertime. Um, so you're going to roll a little bit, probably break out to the upside. Um, you'll get that level there's a key level that needs taking out it's the previous target in the high for the rh2 this is going to stump all the support and resistance traders so if we do that it'll do just enough it'll get them all jumping into the trade on a new highs basis and guess what it'll then pull back 
after that. So support and resistance trade is always get handed a loss because they trade the, the bleeding obvious and they jump in here and chase on new highs when they should be in a lot earlier. But anyway, if that happens, you get a little bit of a dip down. But going back up to the biggest t time frames on the target, where are we expecting things to roll to? Well, we expect them to roll to the second interim first, which is at 26 and then approaching 30. And there's possibility of overperformance in all of this as well. Um, so looking not bad if you've got in at 16 and you can get out somewhere near 30 you're not far away from a 2x if we get a bit of overperformance in that you may get your 2x you may get 80 percent um, but that's all pretty good um, and we'll see how it goes so that's your update on omis go omg oh my god okay keep your real trade it small and keep drawing your charts understand your patterns understand your targets check your volume and be safe this is not a recommendation you should trade only money you can afford to lose all the t's and c's etc etc this is entertainment purely okay speak to you all soon